All right, guys, so Mo Brooks, or as Trump likes to call him, Woke Mo Brooks. <laughs> I can't believe he actually said that. How do you think this guy's woke? It's hilarious. Uh, Mo Brooks got into a really heated argument on Fox News um, talking about how he thinks Trump was robbed um, in the 2020 election. And the host really wasn't having it. I mean, she was pushing back. She was trying to be nice at the same time, but Mo really flips out. So let's watch and, and then we'll talk about it. Available. All of this is happening after former President Trump decided to unendorse you, sir, saying you had blown it by going, quote, woke for not talking about what he says was 2020 election fraud. What exactly did the president ask you to do after the 2020 election? The president and I had many conversations between September 1st and his decision to unendorse me that revolved around his being reinstated, uh, revolved around his wanting to rescind the election. And I can understand him wanting to do that, okay? He was robbed in my judgment in 2020. In his judgment, he was robbed. That's quite admission. So they were having conversations on a regular basis about how the election was stolen from me. It's terrible. It's wrong. I want to rescind it. I want to get reinstated. That's a psycho conversation to be having. It truly is. That like, and this guy's entertaining it the whole time and saying, I agree, man, you were robbed. This is crazy. This gets even more interesting. And so I can understand that desire. Uh, the conflict was when I would explain the law does not permit us to do that. Our one shot at reversing the election, our one shot in an election contest under the United States Constitution and federal law is on January 6th. That's it. That's the final appeal date. So anything we do after that has to focus on winning the 2022 and 2024 elections. We can use what happened in 2020 as a motivation to try to get better election laws to use as a motivation to win in 2022 and 2024 to save our country. But what is now done in 2020 is irreversible under the United States Constitution and the United States Code. And I'm one of those who believes in law and order. I might not like it that that's the end game, but that is the end game. And just to go. So that's really interesting. And I think he's being, I think he's telling the truth. I think this is what he really believes. So he believes the election was stolen. It was robbed from Trump. But hey, man, tough cookies because our last uh, moment where we could have done anything was on January 6th. In other words, he thinks that Mike Pence had the authority and the ability to, to say, you know, I henceforth declare this election illegitimate and I do not agree that Biden should be president. And, um, you know, look, he really didn't have that authority. It would have set up a massive constitutional crisis. It would have went to the courts and the courts would have said, Biden's president, get out of the way. Um, that's what I, I think would have happened if we were in such a situation. Um, but it would have been messy. It would have been real bad. It would have been the closest we've actually been to a civil war since the civil war. Um, I don't think it would have actually come to that, but it would have been as close as you could possibly get. They, they tried a coup, basically. Trump and his cronies tried a coup. It didn't work. Mike Pence had a shred of dignity and integrity left and he said, I can't overthrow an election for you. Mo Brooks thinks, no, he did have the authority to do that if he wanted to do that. But when he didn't do that, now there's just no path forward in terms of the law and in terms of the Constitution to get Trump in there. So even though Mo Brooks sincerely believes Trump won the election, I can't, there's nothing we can do now is basically his position. Now watch what happens now. On the record, there has been still no evidence or proof provided that there was any uh, sort of fraud in that. Any oh, no, that's wrong. Don't, that I election. don't know why you people in the media I, I just, keep I saying just, that, but that is absolutely false. No, it's not. What you're saying is false. I don't know why you people in the media keep saying that. What does that even mean? You people in the media, as if the people in Fox News and CNN and MSNBC are the same. They're just one monolith, the media. Look, they're very different in many respects. They do have some connecting tissue, namely they both defend the establishment, but Fox News defends the Republican Party at all costs, MSNBC and CNN defend the Democratic Party at all costs, the corporate wing of those parties. So why do you people in the media keep saying that? Well, the reason why Fox News keeps saying that now is because they flirted with going down the path you went down, Mo Brooks, and they got smacked with lawsuits. Dominion sued the pants off of Newsmax and One America News Network, and I think they threatened a lawsuit against Fox News unless they drop the nonsense of a stolen election. So the reason why they're going down this path is because they're actually correct about it. He managed to find the one thing 
that mainstream media is correct about, and he took issue with that. That's amazing. On that is that, absolutely false. You keep note, saying though, it every time, but what, that's absolutely what false. Is false sir? You had 150 congressmen and senators who absolutely disagreed with you on what you just said. And they're wrong. And they're wrong. Okay. This is a guy who watches Dinesh D'Souza's movie and is like, this is straight facts, bro. This guy's spitting fire. He's right about all of it. Dinesh D'Souza is a con artist and a fraud. He literally committed election fraud and then turns around and makes a movie about how the Democrats did election fraud. His movie was a joke. It was a joke. Watch Crystal Ball's monologue on it. She rips it to shreds. It's the dumbest thing anybody's ever made ever. And he omits a thousand different facts that disprove his case. And Mo Brooks fell for it because Mo Brooks is not that bright. So what are you calling them? What are you calling them when you say... I'm calling them wrong. I'm calling them wrong. Now, by the way, I think... Almost all of the elected Republicans know the election wasn't stolen. And the few that do think that are the dumbest among all of them. So I'm calling some of them liars because they're lying about what their position is to try to save their political asses. And then the other ones I'm calling stupid. That's what I'm calling them. Now, this is quite apart from, you know, Republican voters. They're a different breed entirely. But the Republican politicians... Ooh, a lot of them are con men and they're liars and they're trying to save their own political ass. And then some of them have truly drunk the Kool-Aid and they're off their rocker. 150 uh, Republican senators and congressmen looked at the voter fraud issue and said there was a major problem. What are you calling the Commission on Federal Election Reform, a bipartisan ref uh, uh, mm -hmm. committee uh, with Jimmy Carter on the one hand and James Baker, Ronald Reagan, White House chief of staff on the other back in 2005, who analyzed the systemic weaknesses, the systemic flaws in our election system and warned us that elections are going to be stolen if we don't fix these problems. And those problems are, were not fixed. Okay. So I don't know who's telling you there's no evidence, the but that tells me you haven't judges, done your homework. I'm sorry, but judges, that's the way it is. The courts and the judges that have. No, no, the courts. No, wait, time out. Don't go into that. Don't go okay. into that. All right. Don't I go into that. Up, though, the because... Don't go into that because it disproves my point. On Do not note. have the wait a minute. No, no, I'm getting I'm getting in the last word on this one because you just made a false statement. OK, the courts are not the final arbiter of who wins federal election contests. Congress is that is required by the United States. Congress. And if Mike Pence said, I reject the the conclusion of this election, where would it have gone? Where would it have gone? It would have gone to the courts and the courts would have said, eh. Even a, a hardcore right-wing Supreme Court would have been like, no, you lost the election. The reason why he's so dismissive of the courts in this conversation is because across the board, they've sided with Biden. Trump-appointed judges have sided with Biden. Other Republican-appointed judges have sided with Biden. So he has to just, oh, no, 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 courts don't count. Wait, why don't they count? They don't count because in every single way, they destroyed your shitty narrative which is built on a foundation of quicksand. Constitution that is required by the United States Code for congressmen and senators and the president. So don't be surprised that quote, courts don't me, usurp the power that is quote, authorized the United States Congress. Let me just quote the GOP commissioner in Wisconsin in the Wall Street Journal uh, today. Printed and I will read it verbate. He said, there is no evidence that election fraud is the reason Trump lost in Wisconsin, and that is not for lack of looking. His advice to your party is to pivot away from these conspiracy theories focused on the issue that affects Wisconsin families and their pocketbooks. Sir, I want to move on to January okay, 6th. Okay, then look at, the, look, the at the, look at the judge's opinion. Look at the judge's opinion in Pennsylvania that talked about over 2 million illegal ballots cast. That was their court. Wait, you just said the courts don't matter. Now you say the courts matter? What happened? Court order. Sir, Look at the. You... I thought you said the courts don't matter. You just said the courts don't matter. Wait, 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 don't bring up the courts. But now you bring up the courts. Why'd you bring up the courts? Now, by the way, he's absolutely misstating whatever was said in that court because there were over 60 court cases on this exact issue of rigged election, stolen election, stop the steal. And virtually every single one, Trump lost. The Republicans lost, and the only ones that they won were on procedural nonsense grounds, which wouldn't change the outcome of any of the elections. They did an audit in Arizona, one of the main states where they were like, this was stolen from Donald Trump. Um, they did an audit over there, and what did they find? Not only did Biden win, he won by more votes than on election day, than what he thought he won by on election day. Look, I, 
I know some people who don't follow politics closely might get sucked down this rabbit hole of, of this conspiracy theory, but go back and watch. I was on Rogan's podcast doing an election special on the night of the election. Before the election happened, I called exactly how it was going to go. Because what would happen is this red mirage scenario, it was called, where it looks like Trump is up. It looks like the Republicans are going to win. But the reason why that's the case is because in most states, they count the election day votes first. Then after that, they count the mail-ins. The election day vote, Republicans overwhelmingly vote more on election day. Democrats overwhelmingly did more mail-in stuff. Why? COVID-19. So if you count the election day stuff first, it's going to look like the Republicans are winning everywhere, Trump's winning everywhere, and it's going to look like Biden storms back and wins. Because then you count the mail-in votes, and the mail-in votes are massively Democratic. I said beforehand, this is what's probably going to happen, the red mirage scenario. Now, I said that because I read about what's supposed to happen with the election from election experts, and I read the way in which they count the votes. I just dove into the substance of it, and that's what I realized. Now, a lot of people look at that and they go, oh, Trump was winning, and then they started cheating. No, I called it beforehand because I knew how the votes were going to be counted. And it's not like there was actually Biden charging back. All the votes were, were cast. So it's just how you count them, how they come in. So he's just, oh, God, it's so... I think he really believes it, which is driving me crazy. Like, there are some people who say this stuff and it's just opportunistic. They want to win their election. They don't want to buck Trump. They don't want to get his ire. But Mo Brooks really believes this. And this is a guy who Trump unendorsed. Now, the reason Trump unendorsed him is because Mo Brooks said, look, there's just no legal remedy to this now. There's nothing we can do. But he agrees with Trump on all the substance of the election. He thinks Dinesh D'Souza is an honest actor telling the truth. There's uh, every claim that they make. That they think is some like, you know, debate ending blockbuster point. It gets, it's not true. Like the stuff they're saying is not true. There weren't millions more ballots cast in fucking Pennsylvania than people there, whatever the fuck. It's just not accurate. Uh, special investigation of a former Wisconsin committee. Supreme Court justice who found significant voter fraud at nursing homes in the state of Wisconsin. Okay. Look at the 2000 mules document. He's bringing up the Dinesh D'Souza documentary that has come out. Look at how many mass mail out of ballots there were across okay, the United I, States for which we have no security. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. This guy, Dinesh D'Souza's like, you know, big evidence is like, here's somebody who dropped off eight ballots. And it's like, okay, well, there are some people who go and drop off their mail in ballots and they're taking all of their family's ballots. Why do you jump right to this is some massive conspiracy? Like, what do you, what? They have nothing, they have nothing, they have nothing, and Mo Brooks fell for it because he's not that bright. Okay, um, and, and that has been looked at and fact-checked by multiple outlets, including Reuters, who have debunked that as any sort of proof that there was widespread voter fraud. I'm sorry, but... How does it feel to get wrecked by a Fox News host? A mindless drone is wrecking you. The people who fact-check it and find you January, absolutely wrong, Sandra, January but keep going 6th. with that story if you wish. <laughs> keep going with your 2,000 mule story. Yeah, I'm using an election fraudster to talk about how he uncovered election fraud. Fuck out of here, Mo Brooks. God damn, man. All right. Well, that was quite a back and forth. That was quite a debate. Mo Brooks is a mess. And um, when Fox News is running circles around you, I mean, that's it's it's time to hang it up, dog. Give it a rest. Go retire. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.